I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Tonight we're talking about the life of an auto journalist and as always we'll be answering all of your car related questions. Lemonade is brought to you by Onvic, that's Ontario Vehicle Sales Regulator and produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is John Raymond, an industry consultant and APA advisor, and Neil Verano. He's the editor of the National Post Drive section. We'll be taking your calls all evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome to the show. Hi. My boss. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to behave. John, thanks for coming by. You're going to behave. always, I'm going to behave. <laughs> well, <laughs> so we got to watch this. possible. I could maybe do it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I got lots of questions for you because you've been on both sides of the spectrum. You're an editor now, but you've been an auto reviewer and you still do reviews. And I really wanted you to come on because I want to talk to viewers about how that inform how that sausage gets made. Because frankly, most of us don't know how what we're reading ends up getting into print mm -hmm. or online. So we're going to go into that first. Though I just want to talk to John. We've got some a APA business and some just heads some up APA tips. Some APA business. Yeah. So. Um, each week you always say call John or John sitting on the couch and um, got me thinking because we get a number of phone calls at the APA what kind of car should I buy I have problems with my car Lorraine sent me sorry and, <laughs> no no that's quite all right and um, most of the calls where people have problems um, they don't call us soon enough or speak to somebody in the know so if you're having serious problems with your car and you bring it into the garage, keep in mind that that's your car, that's your money, ask the right questions, don't ask the service center, whether it's a dealership or a garage, to do the work until you understand what the cause was, what the repair is, and how much it's gonna cost. So some of our, the people that call in, obviously they don't know about cars, so the first thing they should do is ask somebody that knows, maybe get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, we have a wonderful thing called the internet now for about uh, 20 years. You could Google, so if you have a Ford Focus and you have a problem with your transmission, you could Google these things and find out, or a Volkswagen or whatever, and find out what are some of the probable causes. And sometimes some of these sites even list what the cost of the repairs are. So um, the next step would be, um, which is also important is, oh my God, I got this really high expensive repair mm -hmm. and the garage wants $1,900 for it. Yeah. Well, maybe you should go back to the garage and say, I don't understand my car just came out of warranty. Um, explain this to me mm -hmm. and see if you could get me, and the word in the industry is a goodwill. Could you get me a, a discount? Could you get me adjustment on the price? Often if your car is recently off a of warranty, uh, a dealership with the brand, uh, no matter which brand it is, will look at it on a case-by-case -case basis Did the person perform their maintenance. It was the car in good shape and they'll get a discount, whether it's 10%, 15%, up to 50%. So they'll try and work with you something. Yeah, and they'll reasonable. get the parts sometimes in included. So um, what we tell our members and consumers that call us is actively get involved in your case. Uh, call out for help, raise a hand in the Toronto area. You could call us at 416-204-1444 and ask for any of the counselors, including me, and we'll walk you through this. So not only are we going to save you money, probably, but we'll save you lots of aggravation. Now, what do you do when sometimes you take your car in and they give you this estimate and they've got it apart back there, especially something like brakes. When you think your brakes should be fine and they go to do a rotation, they go, oh, you need brakes. Do you want us to do it? And they're literally holding the parts, looking at you. And if you're thinking, they were just done 20K ago, like th that doesn't seem reasonable to me. So, if you say, put it back together and I'm, I'm well, going to make well, up my mind. We're going to back up, actually. When, yeah. Let's say you go in and you want inspection done. You should tell the service advisor or the person who's writing down your information, I'd like to have an estimate on each of the items. Mm -hmm. Don't take it apart until uh, I give you an authorization. Okay, because a lot of times people don't want to pay twice and they'll lean on you and they will say to you, well, it's going to cost you twice now for us to get in, get to this point in the repair. Do you really want to pay an extra hour of labor? And sometimes, yeah, you do because you find out that they're not legit but 
Yeah, and often, you know, let's give the benefit of the doubt to the service centers and the dealerships. Often, when they're in there doing a repair, they it's notice. just smart business for that consumer yeah. to get either that disc replaced if they're changing pads or something mm -hmm. else, because the big cost is labor, right? At yeah. a, over a hundred dollars an hour now okay. to mm -hmm. take things apart. Okay, let's bring you into the conversation. <laughs> right. Car reviews. We say all the time to people, the internet is a godsend basically has leveled the playing field in so many ways because people have access to all this extra information. How do you, as both an editor and a writer, discern between what's a good site and what is a bad one? What kind of sources do you look for as a consumer? Ah, well, uh, first of all, that is getting more important uh, these days because I know a lot of people are using uh, car reviews, uh, car websites, before uh, before they go car shopping. You know, mm -hmm. uh, instead of hitting four or five dealerships, now they're hitting one or two dealerships because they've already done their research. Mm -hmm. So to do research, first of all, it really has to be a major uh, publication, you know, uh, like a major newspaper, uh, a major car website. Uh, uh, the internet is great, but it's, it's also offered a lot of people with little or no experience uh, a forum to do whatever they want, you know. So uh, I'm not saying all of those are bad, but you're a lot more sure that the National Post, uh, Car and Driver, let's say for example, these things that have become, been around for a long time, uh, those are a lot more uh, reliable, let's say. What's difficult is some people are car people and they read around, all year round. Mm -hmm. Like I read my horoscope. Mm -hmm. They read car sections. And read everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. But for a lot of people, when they start doing research, it's because they're about to buy a car. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe been four years or six years or whatever. And so they funnel down into every period of time when they're going to start buying a car. They haven't been reading for five or six years mm -hmm. necessarily. So you can't catch up on all of that. And I do this for any big purchase I make. I don't read about shoes every day. I'm lying. Yes, I do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but beds or furniture or something, so it's the same with cars. So for people who are gearheads, they're reading that stuff for fun and they're noticing progressions and they, yes. you know, they know which sites they've built up. They know who they go to to listen to every mm -hmm. week. I would like to pretend I'm one of them, but not necessarily, but I know driving.ca is. Of course. So how do you, what are some flags that maybe this site isn't particularly trustworthy? First of all, uh, it's just like anything if you're researching. You don't just go to one source. You go to a lot of sources. You know, like uh, if you want to read about the Honda Civic, uh, maybe you do read it in Car and Driver, maybe you read it in the uh, driving.ca. And if, if all of these things are sounding, are saying the same things, then you, you get a lot more uh, assurance that, yes, that's what the car is like. If you go on uh, this, this other website. Bob.com. Sure. <laughs> and he says something that the car is terrible, uh, it shakes and blah, 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 but you, re you don't read that in anywhere else. Then that's kind of an indication that maybe Bob.com isn't so reliable. You have to take that with a grain of salt. Of course. Bob Somebody. might have a bug up his butt. Yes. What Neil's yes. saying is absolutely true. Not that long ago, the average buyer went to uh, three to five dealerships to mm -hmm. look at a car. Now it's 1.3, your statistic is right on. Mm -hmm. And they've made their decision based on reading driving.ca, going to different car magazines and things online. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we've noticed is a lot of these publications don't really necessarily tell you what it's like to live with the car. Is that trunk really useful to put a stroller in, mm -hmm. a case of beer? If I'm six foot, could I really put a passenger behind me? Mm -hmm. It's more on the dynamics, so oh, it's a good looking car, but they miss visibility and some other things. And what we tell um, our members and consumers is it's very important to read these articles, but go and try the car, mm -hmm. see how it fits. And this is something that yeah. Lorraine's talked about it, but also um, watch the associated video. So some of the video that is in some of these online sites or, or you could see it on in a magazine actually tells you to go to that URL. That's also important because we need a lot of visual uh, inputs, whether yes. it's reading something physically or reading, seeing something online we or video. We call the Canadian test a hockey bag. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like forget forget uh, that's golf bags. That's the measure. And yeah. My sister took her kids' goldie pads with her everywhere she right, went. Right, right. 
you know, you, you bring up a good point about uh, uh, learning to live with and stuff like that. And that's something that we, we try and focus on. We, when, you're, when you're reviewing, let's say, a Porsche 911. You know what? We're going to have to come back on the 911, and I'm cutting you off, and I apologize. But that's fine. That's the way it works in this world. That's fine. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by OMVIC, Ontario's Motor Vehicle Sales Regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls, 800-968-7836.